Are you trying to make changes in your life, maybe in yourself, and you just keep running into problem after problem? Well, if that's the case, I can completely relate to that. I also had that problem. And what I found is that I was pushing myself into situations that were not really resonating with me. You can talk about vibration or energy, or whatever you want to call it. The difficulties will arise when you are demanding of yourself things that don't match your actual vibration, where you're at at your stage in life. And so it, it becomes more and more difficult the more you try to push yourself into that into that situation. You know, so I would say, you know, if you are trying to do that, just take the time to acknowledge what's working and what's not working. I didn't do that. And that was the biggest mistake that I really made. I probably should have changed a lot faster. I stick with things. I don't tend to give up. I am very persistent. But unfortunately, you have to call it quicker than I did. Um, you know, if you find that you're you're working towards things and it's just not working out and you're frustrated and you don't know you don't know how to make it work and something just doesn't feel right energetically, then I would say then that's the time to to cut it. That's the time to to let it go. Um, and like I said, I didn't do that. I'm far too stubborn. I'm far too persistent. I'm not used to things not working out that I try to have work out. So when I was encountering difficulties, I just kept pushing and just kept pushing and just kept pushing. And I did as much as I could, you know, um, and still it just, I couldn't get things to work out. And so I would say that, um, you know, in those situations, you have to, you have to learn to listen to your intuition. And I was ignoring mine completely. Uh, so, and I, again, I don't recommend that at all. I, I recommend listening to yourself. I recommend acknowledging what's working, what's not working. If it's not working, why is it not working? How can you change it? How can you make it better? Um, you know, and just really focus on the things that are working um, and, you know, release those things that aren't working. I think it's also important to acknowledge yourself through that whole process because it's never easy to make changes, right? And a lot of people won't do it. A lot of people don't want to make changes in their life. They're pretty happy with staying with whatever the norm is that they've got going on in that, in that time. They, they don't typically make changes unless they're pushed to do that. And so if you're pushing yourself to do that, then by all means, sit and acknowledge yourself for that because that's never easy ever. And so give yourself credit where you should, you know, don't be too, too hard on yourself because, um, you know, like I said, a lot of folks won't, won't even try. So the fact that you're actually trying is testament to, you know, you as a person who wants more, who, who is trying to succeed, trying to do something different, trying to be creative, whatever the, whatever it is that you're doing, if you're pushing yourself to do something different than what you're currently um, in action with, then that's that's wanting more, that's doing more. And whatever that looks like for you, whether it's a creative endeavor, whether it's um, you know physical endeavor, whatever it is, it takes a lot of strength to do that. And you should be proud of yourself. You know, and just know that sometimes you're going to make mistakes through this process and that's okay. You're supposed to make mistakes because that's how we learn. That's how we all learn. If everything was perfect and everything worked every single time you tried it, you'd never really grow. You'd just continue to do what you know. But by making mistakes, we actually have to learn. We have to think. We have to rework things. We have to, we have to make new plans, new creative ideas. So it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail. There are so many creative people, so many successful people that have failed hundreds of times prior to actually succeeding. But we don't hear about those failures. Typically, nobody talks about that. And that's okay, but it's not reality, right? 
we all have to fail in order to succeed. We fail forward. And that's just part of life. That's part of growing. That's part of changing is to, to fill yourself into something new. And I know that sounds funny to say that you, and, and not everybody fails, but a lot of us, as we're out here being creative, trying to do something different, inspiring new actions within ourselves, it's, it's a whole new path. It's a whole new you. So as you get to know this new you, you're going to, you're going to make mistakes and just forgive yourself for that and move past it and move past it quickly. Don't let it linger. And I would also say that, um, don't be afraid to share what you are trying to do and that it's not working. Um, when you strive for perfection, it, it never really works out that well and you can't really hide it because people, people know that you're struggling. So I would just say, just be honest, be open about your path because we can all learn from that. We're all trying it, you know, something new. We're all trying to, it, at least in this atmosphere, we're trying to build something different um, for our lives, for other people's lives. And so through doing that, just, just share your truth. It doesn't matter. We're, we're all new at, at all of this, um, you know, sharing online or um, be trying to create something new. It can be, it can be a new experience for a lot of us. Even doing videos can be a, a new experience for some of us. And it, it's not always comfortable. It wasn't comfortable for me. Being on video was the worst thing in the world for me. I did not like it. And I still struggle with it sometimes. I might sit here for hours before I'll actually turn the video on. It's terrible. But I know that it's something that I want to do. And so because I want to do it, nobody else is pushing me. I'm... I'm pushing me. Um, so I would just say that it's okay to just be authentic. It's okay to just um, be a little humble. And, you know, and then we all learn. We all learn together. But I will say that you really cannot do something if you're not energetically aligned with it. If, you're, if your body is not ready if your mind is not prepared energetically, vibrationally, whatever you want to call it, then you're not going to be able to be successful in the action that you're trying to take. It's just not going to work out. You know, you have to, you have to get into alignment with what you want before you're able to, to find that enlightenment and that inspired action to be able to move forward. And you have to become, you have to come from a healthy space too. Like there was so much time where I was dealing with, I was dealing with so much drama and so much negativity, which was not my norm, which was not what I was used to. I did not, I didn't understand how to process all of what was happening in my life. And it was so much that it, I was just overwhelmed with it. And how can you actually move forward? How can you actually succeed if you've got all of that negativity that's surrounding you? You've got to let, you've got to let a lot of that go. And um, once I did, I started to free up my abilities and free up my creativity and my way that I wanted to show up in the world. I didn't want to be looked at as the person that. Um, you know, was not in action. Although I had been in action, it might not have been what people expected or wanted, but I was in action. I didn't want to look like somebody who was drifting through their life, although that is what it appeared to be. That's not me. And I'm sure it's not you either. So try to get yourself aligned with what it is that you're looking for. Get yourself healthy, mind, body, and spirit, because that is the only way that you're going to be able to truly be the creative person that you want to be. It's the only way that you're going to be able to 
you know, be inspired to actually take action is when you feel like you're at that stage of, of your being where you're comfortable enough to do that. You can't do it from, from a, an area of lack and defeat. Nobody can. If they can, I'm, I'm inspired by them because I know I couldn't. And I know that a lot of people couldn't, um, you know, I've always been able to create and do whatever I set my mind to. I wasn't used to not succeeding. I wasn't used to, um, coming into or, or coming up against so many, um, brick walls. And so as I kept encountering these brick walls, I was getting more and more frustrated, more and more frustrated with myself. What am I doing wrong? What am I missing? What can I do differently? And not coming up with a whole lot of answers. So I kept trying and I kept persisting and still yet nothing was working. And this was going on for several years. And, you know, in the end, I was guided to, to just, you know, talk about, talk about drifting through life. Well, I wasn't drifting. I know it looked that way, but that wasn't me. And so I couldn't own that. I couldn't, I wasn't comfortable in that, in that seat. It, it wasn't made for me. I was always pretty powerful in my life and I always wanted to do always wanted to, to just succeed more, do more, be more, offer more, show up more, give more, <laughs> you know, I was always doing something, you know, you ask my friends and family and they'll be like, yeah, she was always doing something. She was volunteering. She was working. She was, you know, taking care of the kids, whatever, the, whatever. I was always busy. I was definitely not a drifter. You know, and so unless you're fully aligned with what you, to what you're, what you're doing as, as wonderful as it may be, that's being suggested to you, right? If you're not fully aligned with it, you won't be able to take those inspired actions to be able to move forward. So I guess what I'm saying to you is just get yourself in a space where you feel like your mind, body, and soul is is all aligned, you're feeling healthy, you're strong, and then you'll be able to move forward. Then the true you can start to come out. And that's all that, that we really need in the world is the true you, who you really are. Because who you really are is, is, is what the world needs to see. They need to experience you. So I would say, you know, everything happens energetically before it actually happens physically. So if you can get yourself into the space where you want to be, how you want to show up in the world, then it, you will start to be able to take those inspired actions to be able to get to get the messages out that you want to get out to create the thing that you want to create or to move in the way in the world that you want to move for myself. I kept telling myself, I just want my power back. I felt somewhere along the line that um, through sickness and tragedy and then loss and then despair and then heartbreak and brick walls, somewhere in all that mess, I felt like I lost my power. I didn't have anything left to really give. So I tried other things. Instead of giving, I figured I would try to receive and try to build something through a receiving method, but that wasn't really physically aligned with who I am. So I would just say, you know, really try hard to focus on yourself, get your health in order, get your mind and your body and your spirit in order and in alignment. And then you, I assure you, when you get rid of all the different distractions and you 
maybe seclude yourself. Become a little selfish. And and I know that's that's a tough word to hear, right? We think of selfishness as something that's negative, but it's really not. Um, being selfish, I learned from um, watching Matthew McConaughey. I did a, a virtual road trip with Matthew McConaughey, and I learned that being selfish is actually a blessing for those that are in your life because when you get a little bit selfish, you're able to focus on on what you are doing and creating or being, and that only benefits those that you love further down the down the line. Does that make sense? So I would say, you know, separate yourself if you have to. Become a little bit selfish, not completely and not wholly, but a little bit selfish, and get in alignment with what your needs and wants are. And then you'll be able to move mountains, you know, like, um, so I have to actually look this up. I'm trying to learn verses of the Bible, but, um, so when you get yourself into alignment and you start to have faith in, in yourself, it's like, it's like what Matthew wrote in, um, uh, chapter 17, verse 20 and 21 in the Bible, he says, For truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And I assure you that that is so, so true. I have wanted to do these videos and be in action with my voice for a really long time but I wasn't aligned enough to do it. I wasn't in my power, what I knew to be myself. I was coming from a space of lack, from not having faith, from, from losing so much and being under so much stress that I wasn't, I wasn't able to find the, my voice. I wasn't able to find the courage either. But I feel like I'm starting to find that again, and I'm starting to find my power back or get my power back. And here we are, you know, and I definitely have the faith. So I would just say to you that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, that you will be able to move mountains in your life too. And I wish you all the best.